Good morning. It's nice to be back here at St. Anne's with all of you. So every time we walk into the church, we're reminded of our baptism. We make the sign of the cross with the, uh, bat- or with the uh, holy water back there. And baptism, it's the first sacrament. It's the door or entrance into the church. And what's unique about St. Anne's is if you've ever looked at the baptismal font back there, there's steps leading down into the water. And one way that we can baptize someone even today is by immersion, where the person is literally lowered down into the water, like at the River Jordan, and then they rise up a child of God. When I was here as a deacon, I was preparing to do a baptism, and I told Father Ernie that I'd like to do it by immersion. And, of course, I got the look. (laughs) You probably all know the look. And then he quickly said no. But what's fascinating about baptism is that there's an act of recreation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we become children of God. And we see elements of this in our gospel. There was a man born blind, and to heal him, Jesus made clay with his saliva and smeared it on the man's eyes. After this, he sent him to wash in the pool of Siloam, and he was able to see again. Now, if we go back to the book of Genesis, God formed man out of the dust from the ground, and then he breathed his spirit into him. Well, here in the gospel, Jesus uses clay from the ground to form a new man, and he sends him to wash. And through the waters of this baptism, he breathes his spirit into him, and he's no longer blind, but he's able to see. He's given new life. And this is what we receive in baptism. We're given a new life. We're recreated. We're cleansed of our sins and made children of God. But we all know this new life, it doesn't eliminate pain, suffering, and sickness. That's one reason that we gather here today to pray for those who are sick and suffering. And I would say it's providential that uh, this day coincides with the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Most of you probably know the story of Lourdes. It was in 1858 when the Blessed Mother appeared to Bernadette 18 times in France. And what she did is she asked her to pray and do penance uh, for the salvation of souls, for the conversion of sinners. Um, Well, during these apparitions, the Blessed Mother um, told Bernadette to dig in the ground. And when she did that, a spring of water was uncovered. And to this day, people come from all over the world to bathe in these waters. And there's a lot of miracles that have taken place and still take place there. Uh, for example, in the, in, in the 1960s, a man was suffering from sarcoma on his left hip, which is a form of cancer, and his hip was completely deteriorated. Well, he decided to make a trip to Lourdes, and he bathed in the spring with no immediate result. But when he got back to the hospital and he went in for an x-ray, it showed physical improvements to the hip. The reports claim that it was a remarkable reconstruction of his hip. Now, miracles like this, they're always exciting. They increase our faith and life of devotion. And they're easy to relate to because we all suffer and we desire to be healed. For some, it's a terminal illness. For others, it's constant pain, physical deformities, mental or psychological problems. And it's only natural that we want to be healed from these infirmities and ask God for a healing. But when we ask him for a healing, we also have to surrender to the fact that he may say no. Not because he wants us to suffer, but because somehow in his plans, our sickness and suffering is more beneficial for our salvation than if we were perfectly healthy. Our first reading, it speaks about the servant of the Lord, and this servant is a prefigurement of Christ, who came into the world to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to release the prisoners. Well, this tells us that Christ came into the world to heal us, to lift us out of our misery, to show us God's love and mercy. 
However, this healing isn't necessarily to take away our sicknesses and sufferings, but to strengthen us and help us to endure them and help us to see that in the difficulties and the pains, these are tools that God uses uh, in the process of recreating us. Pope Benedict XVI, he once said that it's not by sidestepping or fleeing from suffering that we're healed, but rather by our capacity for accepting it, maturing through it, and finding meaning through union with Christ, who suffered with infinite love. The act of recreation it, that took place in baptism, that's not just a once and done thing. The recreation, it begins there, but then it continues throughout our life. Uh, John Paul II, he said that through his suffering, our Savior continues to recreate humanity by his love for us, continually making us something new. It's in the furnace of suffering, brothers and sisters, that God's greatest work of recreation took place. And it's in the furnace of suffering that our share in the cross that it continues to take place. And perhaps this is the greatest display of God's love for us. Not that he takes our sufferings away from us, but that he's entered into our world. He's, uh, he's taken our sufferings upon himself and throughout our lives, he helps us to carry our crosses and he teaches us to find value in them. Now, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray for healing. God may actually want to heal us, and he's just waiting for us to ask. And some of you may even be healed from some physical infirmity through the anointing today. But it's always important to remember that the sacraments, they're not magic. If our illnesses don't suddenly go away, it doesn't mean that they're not working. What's more important than any physical healing is the healing of our soul. And this happens through the graces that we receive in the sacraments. Through the sacrament of anointing, God strengthens us to carry our cross by uniting us to Christ on the cross. He gives us the grace to suffer well. He recreates us by spiritually healing us, and he unites us more closely to him.